Welcome to Money Adventures with TK, a podcast for the ordinary African who's determined to get their personal finances right. Willing to have a better relationship with your money? Well, this podcast is for you. Is climate change a threat to Lesotho or to the African continent at large? This is a question I believe has been left unanswered for many a year. In today's conversation, I get to chat to a climate change enthusiast. And for the life of me, I never actually thought we would ever talk about climate change because I never thought it would affect me. So in today's conversation, we're going to unpack how climate change plays an important role and more specifically, what we should know as young people in the Lesotho context about climate change. So in today's conversation, like I mentioned, I get to chat to a climate change enthusiast. So for people who don't know you, who are you? <laughs> Yo, um, thanks for having me on your podcast. Really, really, um, thank you. Um, I'm Kwaile Monaheng. You know, I'm from the kingdom of Lesotho. I am a, I call myself an African storyteller, a climate mm. change scholar. So I really talk about, you know, amplifying the African voice mm-hmm. when it comes down to climate change. So that's how I literally describe myself. Nice. Yeah. I love the storyteller part. So maybe talk us through climate change is such a weird space, especially for the ordinary Mosotu. What got you interested in this space? Um... Wow. I think, you know, it's actually weird because there's a taboo around climate change that it's not ours to own as Africans, that there's this idea of a changing environment so foreign from who we are. But climate change is actually so important to Lesotho's DNA, Mm -hmm. to you and me, to the people who came before us, our forefathers, Mushwesha era. If we think about how the Lesotho calendar works, you know, Selimasaba Soto, the months. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that those months actually instructions on how to till the land, on how Mm. to manage the land? There's a spiritual connection between nature and climate there. Yeah. And that's like, if you think about forecasting, if you think about preparation for food, you know, that's what our forefathers did. So they respected the environment. They had a lot to do with how the environment had a lot to do rather with how they functioned as human beings and how Mm. the Basuta Nation came together. So climate change is there, you know, the changing environment. So this is something that's quite important for us. If you think about indigenous knowledge, um, the spiral, hello, mm-hmm. there's a reading that some people in Lesotho right now are able to do that forecasts the weather. Wow, okay, I did not so, know that. You didn't know that? <coughs> I so did this, not know that. That is literally in our wow. DNA. Um, if you think maybe more symbolic in our history, when Moshe Shua moved um, closer inland in southern Africa, it, it, if it wasn't for that environment, if it wasn't for how the t- the I suppose the typography of Tababusiu, mm. where do you think Lesotho would, would have been? Because that's how we won our war as well. So the environment is, and nature is really spiritual to how we are as people, but more the spiritual you know, nature of the land to us as Basotho, but also in Africa. So climate change, the environment, it's all intertwined. So wow. we've basically been doing this wow. for a very long time. Yeah. So now suddenly you know all of this, and then you decide to go all the way to do your master's. <laughs> How's that going firstly? And then, yeah, what what are you unpacking or what are you learning from your master's journey? Um, it's actually weird because I didn't start with climate change. So this is, I suppose, knowledge that I acquired in the last two to three years. Um, but I let me just, a bit of, on my education, spent, the, you know, I was a prep, after prep, I was at much having. Mm-hmm. After much having, I wanted to do art. I'm really a creative at art. Um, wow, I love creatives. <laughs> but like, folks are like, no, not at my house. Sorry, find something else. And then, you know, I was luckily I had mentors, mm-hmm. um, role models that were in diplomacy and international relations. So that's what I naturally chose when I went to Rhodes University, which is ironically also a very creative university. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I did an undergrad in economics, international relations, and politics. At Rhodes. And that, and then, you know, I ventured on and on and on. And then I realized, I think it was in a seminar given by a scholar who was in the industry working for government on climate change. And in these seminars, you know, people come in, you know, scholars come in, industry people come in. And, you know, I was just struck by how climate change is affecting Africa. Mm-hmm. So I decided to venture into my master's to do 
a master's in climate change, international relations, intertwined the two, but for Africa. So from the African perspective, global governance, how do we manage climate change? And how does Africa amplify its voice mm. in climate change? Because ironically, the developed world is historically responsible for these carbon emissions, and we'll go into that a bit later. But we are most affected as Africa, so we definitely have an incentive to participate in these mm. negotiations. So after that, then I moved to UCT at a master's level. So I literally jumped out of a plane and stitched the parachute down. <laughs> wow. Because okay. at Rhodes, I'd already done all of these things. I've built myself. And I just realized that I just was lacking in terms of the scientific knowledge of climate change. Because if you think about international relations, I was thinking about how African leaders are outmaneuvered at the global level when it comes to understanding of climate change, the mm. technical aspects especially. Mm. And then we end up signing deals that we don't really know the extent of. The people who capacitate us are from Europe and the developed world. So you really think about what, what, what's the African position? How do we guard, guard ourselves against mm. them? And how do we negotiate from the subordinate level? So all of those things started coming out. And then luckily for me, I got the... I don't, I don't want to say luckily, I worked for it. But I was, I am a Mandela Rhodes alumni, so I got the Mandela Rhodes. Um, and that's literally one of Africa's most prestigious scholarships, perhaps even the world. Yeah, congratulations um, on that, actually. Thank you. But I'm an alumni now, so yeah, <laughs> same, you belong same, to the same story. Yeah. And luckily for me, I then, well, okay, luck is for people who don't think winning happens by accident. So let me stop there. It wasn't luck. I really worked for it, and I was able to then go to UCT where we have the African Climate Development Initiative. And mm. that's literally like a fast-tracking at a master's level with, chi- with, with climate change and sustainable development. And mm. I think I got the biggest shock because I'm a humanities student. And when we were registering, I got the shock of my life when I was told, bro, you're actually in the science faculty. Whoa. My whole inner Dexter's <laughs> lab sort of started coming out. And I'm like, I'm a- I've actually been this guy. Like growing up, I've actually wow. been the Carlton of the group. Please don't say I look like Carlton. I'm not going to do the dance. No like people sort of want to say, you look like Carlton. This is your vibe. You're a square. And I vouch for squares, Maggie. I think that's literally, being a square sure. is actually so cool. Yeah. But like growing up in uni or like growing up maybe in high school, I was the square. I was, I was you know. So it's actually kind of like who's kind of laughing now type of thing. But I'm, wow. <laughs> I'll just I'm leave it there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm interested to find out um, with all of what you've just said now, there's an ordinary Mosoto who is listening to our conversation. How does climate change affect them at an individual level? How does it affect Lesotho as a country? And you mentioned that African leaders are signing deals that they don't necessarily understand. What are we, what should we be thinking about when it comes to climate change as a continent, as a, a country, and as an individual? Okay, so... I think let me do bottom up mm-hmm. because, you know, most of information is top down. So let me actually reverse that, sure. which is what we're actually trying to do with knowledge anyway. Um, for the ordinary Mosoto, we're thinking about how we're already vulnerable in terms of, you know, where we live, in terms of, you know, the poverty line. And if you think of farmers, if you think of climate risks, impacts, you know, floods, mm. um, droughts. They don't really affect us here that much in the urban sector, but you have to think about how sub-Saharan Africa depends on rain-fed agriculture to live. Mm. So droughts being more frequent, all of those things really cause a a multiplicity of or a multiply effect where if there's drought, that affects crop failure, which leads to food insecurity. Mm -hmm. We're already below the poverty line. You know, all of those things. Climate change is, you know, projected to warm, well, Southern Africa is projected to warm twice at the global rate when Southern Africa. Mm. So you need to think about how all those things affects, affect livelihoods directly, food insecurity, and, you know, development entirely because this mm. is what we, what we depend on. Mm-hmm. Um, so then you open it up and you realize that, hang on, Lesotho isn't the only country affected by this. We don't exist in a vacuum. Other African countries also depend for a large, on, uh, to a large extent on agriculture, which means climate change also affects them. And, you know, again, as I mentioned before, we're not responsible for these things. We might have the least emissions as a continent, 
but we're the most affected because we can't adapt. Sure. You know, we don't have the cushions that the developed world has to adapt to climate change. So we, our, our economies are vulnerable. Um, if you think of our development is vulnerable. So for us, we're on the front line of climate change. So mm-hmm. we have to adapt. I mean, in other countries, like if you think of what's happening in northern Kenya, they've had the worst drought they've had in decades. And for them, it's, it's loss and damage. There's a point where in the climate change conversation, you can't adapt anymore. Mm-hmm. comes loss and damage. It means that thing that you had is gone. So those were the things we were discussing. I, I suppose I'm moving on to my career here where I'm actually a, a consultant in the climate change space. I work in Kenya. And I got the opportunity to go to Egypt this year for COP27. Wow. And, you know, you guys will hear about um, the loss and damage historic um, deal. We've been demanding loss and damage. We've been demanding as Africans to exist. We've been demanding to be taken seriously. Our narratives have been have, have not been taken seriously. Our lived experience as Africans has not been taken seriously mm. for the last 27 years in these negotiations for the last you know few decades. So to get that deal isn't necessarily something that's... It's a historic... It's amazing. We're celebrating. But we've been asking for that deal since Rio 1992. So, you know, it's taken a while. How do we, what does that mean to negotiate your existence? How, in, how are we doing that in 2022? There were other um, outcomes out of, you know, the climate change um, negotiations in Egypt that also involved, um, you know, 1.5. And everybody talks about what does 1.5 do? Mm. You know, what's this number, 1.5? 1.5 is basically the number that the IPCC, this is um, the organizational body full of scientists who are responsible and they are the authority on climate change. So 1.5 global warming in terms of, you know, greenhouse gases going into the atmosphere, then, um, you know, there's, there's that warming greenhouse gas effect. Basically means that for Africa, that's, you know, that's double. So we're now projected to go to 2.7. Because nothing was done to curb emissions, Yo. which means that fossil fuels, that's something very interesting, fossil fuels oil, gas, coal, you know, those are old systems of energy that the developed world, um, you know, developed on. Mm. So climate change then becomes a factor because we can't use those same systems. They're old, and that's why it comes down to renewable energy. Because if those systems worked, why do we still have energy poverty in Africa? Why are 600 million Africans still without energy access and electricity if fossil fuels are supposed to guarantee us prosperity. So there's a lot of things around climate change and, you know, for Lesotho, renewable energy, wow. Mm. You know, we're one country and you'll hear about energy transition and this is where the world is going, you know. We need to secure our energy access, our energy ownership, but at the same time, we're going through climate change. So there's three intersecting crises. There's energy, development, and climate. Sure. for African countries and the rest of the developing world, we're dealing with these. So there's, there's, a sure. lot, there's a lot. There's a um, lot to unpack. To unpack yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, you mentioned that you are consulting. Um, you've been in Kenya, you've been to Ethiopia. Um, I know you're one of the directors in a company. Uh, maybe talk us through what that company does. And yeah, it, yeah, literally talk us through what the company does, uh, Hansa Energy. Yeah. yeah. So let me, let me just correct you quickly. Okay. Been to, since joining this NPO in Kenya, I've been to Morocco, sorry, Tunisia, Egypt, um, Tanzania, Kenya. Yeah. Wow. So there's, there's, and then I also, <laughs> it's actually really funny, I went to Saudi Arabia to get back into Africa when I flew to, it's, it's, it's a weird one. That's... I literally, yeah, I had to Doha, Qatar. <laughs> sure. I went. Just to get back into just Africa. Just to get back to Good Africa. Heavens. Good heavens, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, Hansa Energy um, is a social enterprise that provides energy access or, or that co-creates um, renewable energy solutions through indigenous knowledge. So we were first up in 2018. Mm-hmm. That's when we registered. And it's actually an amazing story because the people who, who, who founded Hansa were actually dating at the time when they dropped me off for my first year. Oh, that's nine years ago. Dating, dating. Dating, dating. Oh, okay. the one day, <laughs> I'm I needed to go for my first year. They took me, they dropped me off on my first day of first year. Okay. Literally, they were the ones that are like, peace, bro. I'm like, what do I do? They're like, you enjoy varsity. And nine years later, 
we own a company together. That's nice. So that's literally like the full circle of trust, the full circle of loyalty, and also growth. You know, mm. watching me um, in the space because I first started at Hansa Energy as a consultant, sustainable energy, sustainable, sorry, climate change consultant. And I developed a strategy that was built on how do we move beyond electricity? Mm. How do we move beyond electricity to think about climate adaptation, to think about resilience, to think about how we use electricity? What, 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 what does that do for the livelihoods of people who literally depend on light mm. for their everyday like chores? Im- imagine you, TK, you have six, six hours in the day to be functional. And he's 48. <laughs> exactly. So if we think about what that does back, mm. if we think about there's no industry, like if I tell you the stories that we've seen, the narratives that we've seen in the Lesotho Highlands, which is also where we, we operate, we literally get to see the most um, amazing stories in the sense that people embrace renewable energy, but there's also this, it's not romanticized. Mm. There's a, this idea that renewable energy will guarantee the leapfrog, you know, to to we'll, we'll, be able, we'll use renewable energy, for instance, to develop like that. There's a leapfrog narrative to it. There's, a, there's, there's this idea that it will be catalytic, just like that will go. But we're also what we really need to realize um, is that before we implement these, the, these solutions, they are disruptive because if you think about the rural population, there's already existing systems of people. There's already existing systems where this transformation is about to take place. How do you explain to someone that... Um, you're offering solar power when they've for decades lived on candles and kerosene. So those are the things, you know, communication is very important when you introduce new technology. Mm. Um, and at the same time, we're talking about the idea that there's all of these livelihoods. So it's actually an interesting model. We're invited into the community. That's why it's an indigenous, you know, knowledge, indigenous knowledge like leads us. We're invited into the community. We interact with the counselors and the chief. So we attend a pizza, proper mm, pizza, pizza. Mm. where we learn about what, what, what the needs of the people are. Mm. Beyond, so it actually goes beyond electrification mm. to understanding, to having a deeper understanding of people's lives. And I think I like when you say the deeper understanding and combining that with the communication. Exactly. Because many a time these amazing initiatives go wrong when the communication is not done well. 100%. Yeah. I mean, our history speaks to, you know, lack in civic participation, mm. lack in inclusion of everyday people. So the Basutu Highlanders or lots of rural Basutu have a very, very different um, perception when you come in to help them because they have been betrayed numerous times. Mm. They've been displaced, mm. you know. So there's a, we had to really do the, 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 the work to build trust to say you guys are the experts, you guys are not um, statistics to be implemented, or you're not statistics to be impacted. You got this is your thing. This there is, needs to be yeah. ownership, you know. Yeah. And then they also then feed back into a model where we realize that it's not enough to ask someone to pay for electricity on a lump sum because what do they? What what are the income strands? The, they have what sheep sharing, sikirin. Mm. You think about crops as well. So those are the two main income, 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 income. Sources of income, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we really needed to tailor make our model to move from energy access to ownership, where we actually place the 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 hands, the energy directly into the hands of the people where yeah. they're actually paying over month, over months to own this thing. Mm-hmm. And also paying in, 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 in conjunction or in, in parallel with how they earn. So the pay-as-you-go allows them to actually have this option to access energy, but at the same time also think of the other livelihood, um, you know, the other livelihood um, impacts that they need to sort of like satisfy. Yeah. So that's really allowed us to have, I'm proud to say, a 100% uptake in our products. So that's really... 100%, 100% uptake. 100%. My goodness. Zero defaults. Boop, 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 boop. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that's that. But I think fundamentally... It was the communication aspect. It yeah. was understanding. It was actually knowing that we're treating people as equals because people... They can think. They can themselves. think. They can really think We can themselves. learn a lot. Yeah. And actually, when I say beyond mm. electrification, I'm talking about... Uh, we have this other six, We have six pillars. Education, climate resilience, energy access, technology. Um, I'm missing a few right now. Like, I think I'm missing two. two. Yeah, yeah, about two. But, but I'm yeah. saying you actually learn so much more and there's all of this repository of data that we can use to feedback to, you know, to the Lesotho government around 
what does it mean and how far do we go as a model to help um, communities or to help even the government achieve their energy targets, yeah. Yeah. the electricity targets in the rural community? Because there's a deficit right now where we see the urban sector being um, growing, but the rural sector is not growing as fast as the urban sector. Mm. So there's a projected, the, the you know World Bank, the the World Bank report talks about the fact that there's going to be a deficit up until 2030. Sure. So we're not actually going to meet SDG 7. Sure. So we're actually helping with that. And I think for me, the fundamental bigger thing, bigger picture is Lesotho doesn't need, doesn't have fossil fuels. So when we talk about the energy transition, I actually think Lesotho can be, and I'm going to say it here, 100% renewable. 100% in the to come. renewable. Wow. Imagine okay. if we were able to feed the electricity back into the Southern African power pool and say no to ESCOM and say no to Mozambique and phase them out gradually mm. as we become more, you know, this, mm. this yeah. That's, yeah, there's that's a lot to unpack in this topic. There's a lot. As, as, as you're One speaking, not enough. I know. <laughs> I, I definitely know. So, so talking about things that um, shifting gears slightly, talking about things that you should be proud about, you have just received an award. So maybe we'll talk us through what award you have recently won and the whole process, okay. how you feel what it entails, what it takes to actually win that award. I won't mention it. You you, you, you were the guest of honor. So t- uh, talk us through that. Yeah. It was a team effort. In I've fact, seen, I want to I know, say it was a country effort. What do they usually say? Uh, teamwork. Dream work is teamwork. Yes. 100%. I got it right this time. Um, <laughs> so I think, you know, so we, as I'm, I'm a Mandela Road scholar um, or well, alumni now. Um, so I entered into, you know, there's, there's, there's different programs under the Mandela Roads as scholars, you know, and I was able to, I'm a recipient, I won, I'm a joint winner, actually, of the 2022 ANIT Prize, Mm -hmm. which supports um, initiatives that target the most marginalized communities or the most marginalized vulnerable populations in Africa. So I've I've given you the context now, so you see how Hansa Mm -hmm. comes in. Yes. But I wouldn't have been able to do this alone. I mean, if I look at my team, Kevin, Dennis, Ritumetsi, you know, we were able to come together and think about, you know, how do we come together and how do we use our strengths to bring this, you know, bring birth this baby? How do we bring Hansa to where it is? Which is, again, quite symbolic, which mm. means to light up. Mm. But in this instance, Hansa also means to en- the idea of enlightenment. Yeah. Because we're also conscientizing people on energy access, energy poverty, indigenous knowledge. You know, the idea that Lesotho gets, we get to be ourselves and we get to be very proud of being of being Basotho in the space that is very like you know renewable energy indigenous indigenous knowledge being able to intersect those because we have a lot to learn from indigenous knowledge all mm. over the world like mm. these these indigenous people are, have been the custodians of sustainable development for a very long time so yeah back to the prize um well it's going to allow us to do a lot more than we than we had anticipated starting off so it's a grant um and it's basically going to allow us to electrify more homes, but also to build a repository of knowledge, but also to also set 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 us set ourselves up for, you know, for more funding, mm. more, for more um, a competitive edge. Entering the market with a grant like that really says we've announced ourselves, and that's something that we really want to want to also keep 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 going at. So that that's is. something that's quite big, also for the country, because when you get that international law nod from experts all over the world, from experts who are kings and queens in their own right all over the world. You know, we're stretching as far from the U.S. We're talking about people who are on global panels, mm-hmm. who said yes to Hans, who said yes to Lusut, who said yes to us. So that's, I mean, that already speaks volumes of where we want to go. And yeah, 100%. So we're in this space. And I mean, beyond just the prize, it's also about the idea of runway and the idea that we want to at least bring Lesotho on the map while we still have this runway before we take off. Bring Lesotho on the map. People are having these conversations around Lesotho. I was at COP27 just now. Lesotho, the Lesotho delegation hosted their own panel, you know? Mm. That's that, 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 like, I, I don't think people understand the gravity of that situation. There's also a person um, in the delegation, Mokona France, who is one of Africa's lead negotiators. Why are we not reporting on those mm. things? This is mm. this is where Lesotho is at, you yeah. know. And we and I think also just to bring it down to young people, to bring it down 
to conscientizing people about the importance of climate change and where Lesotho stands and where Lesotho stands to gain. You know, imagine if we became an example for the rest of the world on what it means to be a renewable energy producer, but doing it in the right way as well, mm. because it's not enough for us to replicate the idea of fossil fuels where there's an exclusionary process, there's no civic participation. When we implement renewable energy solutions, sustainable sustainable interventions, we also need free, prior and informed consent from those communities before we go in there. Wow. You know, that's something very important yeah. that we don't <clears throat> think about. Where are these, you know, we talk about, I'll use an example of um, the distribution. Where are those pile, um, sorry, power lines going to go? That's people's land. That's people's land. We think about that is people's um, land. solar power, you know. Have you have you the solar power being built on arable land? Have you have do what do those communities do now? People being displaced because sure. of major dam projects. Sure. Where do those communities go? Even if there was some sort of consultation and they agreed, does that compensation really um you know, does that really does this mm. money really compensate you for what you've lost because of the Highlands Water Project, for instance. Sure. So the, and, and I mean, it's not just Lesotho. This is happening all over the world. So as we implement sustainable solutions, we can't replicate systems of exclusion that have already been, you know, grounded on fossil fuels. Then, I mean, we're just replicating the same wheel, right? Mm. So all of these things come into the aspect. So, yeah, I, there was a big win for Lesotho community, well raising awareness. So, well done. Yeah. Well done. So we're definitely out of time for this particular episode because, like we mentioned, there's so much more to do uh, and to cover. And I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking, oh my goodness, I, I need to do a lot more research in terms of climate change. So in closing, um, I've got two questions and I think we have less than a minute left. Shoot. The first one is, as Mr. Munahing, what would you say is your biggest financial blunder? It's a Money, Money Adventures podcast after all. So what, what would week? you say... Well, it could be this week, it could be your entire life, it could be whatever. What's, what would you say is your biggest financial blunder? Okay. And then the second question is, in fact, it's not a question, what do you say to a young person watching this episode on climate change? What can they do if they want to get into the space that you are in at the okay. moment? Um, so on the financial side, I think my biggest blunder has not has been the lack of planning. You know, as a young person, you don't plan for your own personal finances, you start there thinking, where did my money go? <laughs> you know, so I think that, and I think, and I also, the work that you do also educates people on that. So kudos for that as well, you know. So I think for young people, having that financial planning, that personal budgeting, that's yeah. something very important. I've been more savvy now, understanding where you start working and you realize, hang on, I can afford these things. Expenses cannot, like, surpass income that took me so long to understand <laughs> you want all these nice things but you're not you know saving so I'm, I'm very comfortable right now financially i'm really happy and you know this is something that took me a while to get there but but you know we have to grow some stage adulting is very hard it is um, it's ridiculously hard yeah but that's not the advice i'm giving to <laughs> young people because adult, adulting is already hard but i think i mean there's a quote that i live by and i mean it's it's it's, it's built on you know my grandfather's teachings my mom's teachings my brother's you know advice each time i meet him it's embrace the individual you are and don't be a follower that mankind conditions you to be I think repeat that again because that is deep. Okay. <laughs> Embrace the Embrace the individual you are. Do not be a follower that mankind conditions you to be. Wow. Right? It means drop smike. <laughs> well, anyway, continue. This is this was expensive. So it is expensive. It. Um base for me that basically means keep pushing, keep going. Um there's 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 no, you know, there's no I, I can't even tell you I've achieved so many things, but I don't see the, the end result of mm. achieving them together. Mm. Um, and being a good person, doing the right thing ha is so rewarding. But keep pushing, keep going. Um, and that's all I have to say. Just keep embracing and entering in spaces as you are. And I've talked about, we talked about this before the podcast that people love Basotho. People love who we are. We're literally one of the most unique human beings on the planet. Enter in those spaces. Don't shy. Don't look down on yourself. Don't nap on yourself. You nap know, on yourself. Yo, so many of us are napping stay, on ourselves. Stay. <laughs> so that's 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 literally it, and it's the only thing that's really kept me going. You know that finding purpose and let a purpose and letting purpose just drive me. I'm operating in my gift right now. Operating like, in your I can't, gift. I, that, that's literally. You'll see operating the things that, your gift. You'll see yeah. the things that come to you when you operate in your gift. Wow. That's it. 
Wow. That's it. And then in closing, where do you, if people want to connect with you, where do they find you? Obviously, I will link all that in the description box below. Hundreds. But where do people find you? Um, platforms, socials, the whole shebang. Cool. Find Hansa before you find me. Sure. So it's <laughs> energy K K H A N T S A Hansa, right? Hansa Energy. Um, and on Twitter, on Facebook, um, on Instagram. Um, me Kwaile underscore Mona on Instagram. I also just started Twitter. I know I'm really slow. Please don't come at me. I have like two followers on Twitter. It's fine. Um, <laughs> so that's where you find us. And yeah, I'm really excited to be a really privileged. You have an amazing team working with you and I really, really feel grounded in the space. So thank you for making this possible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, you guys know the drill by now. This conversation cannot be shared enough. So do the right thing. Share it with your friends, your family. Share it with the government because I know the prime minister actually spoke about global, I mean, climate change as one of his key initiatives. So please share this video with as many people as possible so that we are enlightened. And uh, so let's get that information and let's let's be enlightened. Global, I mean, climate change is a big issue. And as Basoto, as Africans, we need to do our part to educate and empower ourselves so that we are in those spaces with the right information. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, your friends, your family, your friends, enemies <laughs> we want them as well and then of course leave a comment below and let us know what do you actually know about climate change especially in the Lesotho context and until the next video which he should be back for a part two of this conversation love peace and money signing out cheers guys you've been listening to money adventures with tk i want to hear from you don't be shy to leave a comment to share and subscribe. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Escapes with TK, and follow me on all social media platforms. Remember, money is an adventure. Let's enjoy the ride.